I always feel really weird walking into these places with a camera. Example of one of the things we'd look at. Off to find the plain black long sleepers. This is what I'm looking for. But they don't seem to have them in black. Seems to be an orange, beige. This has a different bottom. Defeated. First store is next. Sabers! Look how this person parked. I you think the fact that they're playing the cure means it's going to be a good day? All right, here's the thing. It's from H&M. This is from their basic collection, and they're selling it for $12.99. Actually, less than that brand new in H&M. That's why I don't really like savers too much. That. Okay, so I'm veering off course a lot, which I tend to do in thrift stores, so I'm trying to keep myself on track. We are here looking for plain black long sleeve stretch tees. Like this, just not in that color. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. This is more on the right track. When you can see the rib in it and the rib is more defined, you're not gonna get a nice even cut. It's going to basically pill and stretch more than you want it to. So that's not a good candidate. Nor is that because that's sweatshirt. All you have to do is believe, believe it exists and it does, and it does. Here it is. Perfect. Look, very fine knit rib. Woohoo! Okay, perfect. This is coming. That is the last time you're going to see it looking like that. We got caught on lace. Wasn't even cute. It's not what I came for, so basically anything else at this point is gonna be a bonus. All right, so Stu found these. I see he's dropping everything. Eight dollars? Eight dollars. Steve Madden's, they're actually, they're kind of cute. What size are they? Absolutely no idea, yeah. seven, 7.5. project okay this is something I'm really excited about and this is a top that is actually featured in gothic beauty magazine they did like a Christmas gift guide and they wanted to feature this top it was one of my original designs that I had in my shop but this one is gonna be a no sew version using a stretch baby doll tee and it's gonna be long sleeve your basic black t-shirt and it doesn't necessarily have to be black it could be any color and what's good about this design is that the techniques that I'm gonna show you are really interchangeable. So they could be used for a male or female design and you could just as easily omit the chest part and just do the arms. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is basically, you're gonna slash the front, slash the arms, and we're gonna weave them up, not sew it, tie it off. And now the materials that you'll need, it's super easy, the top, scissors, and this part is optional. This is a white eyeliner. And the where this comes into play is if you are a little bit concerned about how low you want this top to go, how much you want to show. It really doesn't show very much, but if you're concerned about how low you want to cut it, this is really going to be your guide. So what you do is you put the shirt on inside out and you figure out how low you really want this to be slashed. And then you take your white eyeliner and then you make a mark. Have it be your guide and you're gonna do the whole cutting portion inside out so that you can see where you wanna cut. And then once it comes to the weaving portion, we'll just turn it right side in and go from there. Starting with the sleeves, what you wanna do is fold the t-shirt in half. With all of these slash and weave designs, symmetry is really important. So you wanna make sure that all the seams match up. So match the shoulder seams on both sides and then lay it flat. And then you wanna make sure that it aligns from shoulder all the way to wrist. Now, if the shirt has been washed, it happens to me every time, you'll find that one sleeve is perfect while the other sleeve looks as if somebody tried to tie it in a bow tie. No big deal, just fix it as best as you can, and once they're aligned, you'll be able to actually start to cut them. Starting about four fingers from the shoulder seam, you can start your very first cut. 
The very first cut will always be a tiny little snip, but then every snip after that, you can get creative. You can cut two, three, four inches, you can do a pattern, you can do them all the same length, whatever you want. But make sure that that first cut is a little tiny snip, because that's what we're gonna pull the first piece of fabric through. So it's at this point where I begin to realize how incredibly dull my scissors are and I can't get as creative as I wanted to with the patterns so I'm just gonna kind of keep it simple so as far as width of the strips that you want to cut the best width to go with is about the width of your index finger now unless you have baby fingers this is the width to go with otherwise I would say I don't know it's about half inch I'd say about a half inch so you're gonna continue all the way down from the very bottom and keeping in theme with the first cut, the very last cut is also gonna be a tiny little snip as well. Now we're gonna cut the front of the shirt. It's really important at this point that you separate the front and the back because what's going to end up happening is when you cut the front of the shirt, you're gonna end up cutting the back of the shirt as well. And unless this is your intention, you wanna make sure that it's completely separated. In this case, as in with every case, the seams will be your guide. So make sure that the side seams perfectly line up and that's gonna make sure that you get a nice even cut in the front. On the chest, the slightest asymmetry, it's gonna throw the whole shirt off balance. So make sure you get it as close to perfect as possible. What is with all that lint? Literally did not see that when looking at the shirt, but exposure is a hell of a tool. Turn that up and everything shows. Your next guide are your shoulder seams. So what you wanna do is you expose the shoulder seams and then press them together. Once they're together, you can definitely feel, just by running your finger over them, whether or not they're aligned, because even if they go slightly off, you'll notice. So once these are together, you know that your shirt is definitely evenly folded and it will ensure a more even cut. It's at this point you can decide whether or not you wanna leave the neckline in. A lot of people opt to just take the neckband out and that's entirely up to you. It looks cool with or without. It gives it a little bit more of a shredded DIY look if you take out the neckline, but it also makes it a little bit lower cut. I chose to leave it in, but entirely at your discretion. Your very first cut is gonna be your longest and you wanna have it about, I would say maybe two and a half, maybe three inches, I would say two and a half inches from the shoulder seam. You wanna get it to almost where the bra strap begins because I feel like it kind of obscures and disrupts the pattern of the shirt when you can see the bra strap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut each strip smaller than the last one because we're going for an upside down triangle. I guess as a rule of thumb, it's really important to remember that the very last cut is gonna be super small because that's the cut that we're gonna actually pull the last strip through and then tie it off, which is gonna make a circular hole and you want that hole to be as small as possible, especially in the chest. It's really useful to have something to push through the shirt and hold it flat. It really helps with the weaving process. Now I've used a lid to a Tupperware container I lost that Tupperware container years ago, but I use the lid for projects. That's why you see like dried blood and some other various things on it. I have no idea what it is, but you can use a pillow as well. Just anything that's going to hold it flat so that you can weave it better. So oddly enough, this is a really important step. You want to take the strips you've made and stretch them out, but make sure not to pull too tight or else you'll rip the strips. What it does is it takes the edges and it curls them under. It makes them easier to work with and it just looks a lot neater. To start the weave, you wanna take the first strip and pull it under and then over the neckline. And then you're gonna repeat it going down. Second strip through the first, under, and then over. Third strip through the second, under, and then over it. Fourth through the third, under, over, and just keep repeating this process and leave the last strip. You can leave it like this if you want to. You can actually stay with this design. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna go for it. So taking the first strip, you're gonna pull it over the neckline again, but now twist it. But you're gonna repeat the same laddering process, but when you pull it through, twist it. Again, pull it through, twist it. Pull the next one through, twist it. 
Next one. Pull it through and twist it, making sure that you're holding on to the very last one, and then you pull it tight. And that's it. That one final loop you've been holding on to, snip it in half. And you're going to pull it through the final strip. Remember the hole that we talked about, the tiny little hole? Pull it through, tie it tight. You want to really double knot it. You could sew it if you want to. I find that it holds best if you sew it, but you don't have to. So double knot it, and then you're going to snip off the edges. So now we're going to start on the sleeves. After you've stretched the strips, what you want to do is focus on the small little hole. See the one right up here that we created? Completely ignoring that one, you want to start at the very second strip, pull it through the little hole, and then employing the same method that we've been using, pull the bottom strip through the loop that you've created, and then the next one through that loop, that one through the next loop, and so on and so on. So I had this bright idea to shove my leg through the sleeve to give you a good representation of what this looks like. So you want to pull the first strip through the little hole that we've created, and then with that strip, you're going to pull the third one through the second, and so on. So here it is again, you're going to pull the second strip through the first, third through the second, fourth through the third, fifth through the fourth, and so on and so on going down the leg. And as you can see, as I have my leg shoved in this sleeve, you can do this to leggings too. So the possibilities with this whole process is really endless. You really want to continue this pattern like a ladder all the way down to the very bottom. And once you get to the bottom, you're going to find that you have that little tiny hole that you cut. And we're going to employ the same method that we did with the front of the shirt, where you cut the strip, you pull it through the little hole, and then you double knot it. And that's really it.